Hey everybody, this is DJ, and welcome to my very first episode of Fantasy Banter, a talk show that will include questions from you, the listeners, along with a breakdown of hot weekly fantasy pickups based on position or stat necessity. Every show is going to be a little different based on the number of questions I get, but all episodes will start off with hot pickups by position. Keep in mind that I will be going based off of ability in my availability in my own league, which is a 10-team league on Yahoo Sports. Let's get started right now with hot catcher pickups. My number one catcher pickup is Jonathan LaCroix from the Milwaukee Brewers. Only 24 years old, this Florida native is in his first season as a full-time catcher, and so far he's compiled a 291 batting average to go along with 6 home runs and 27 RBIs. Catchers were without question the hardest position to come by entering this season in fantasy baseball, but it got much worse considering the number one catcher, Joe Maurer, has been out since early April, and my friend Denard Spann recently informed me that the Twins did not know when to expect him back. Another top catcher, 2010 National League Rookie of the Year winner Buster Posey, recently suffered a broken leg in a controversial play involving Florida Marlins outfielder Scott Cousins, and is out for the season after having successful surgery to repair the damage. Besides LaCroix, if you need a power-hitting catcher, the Colorado Rockies' Chris Iannetta has six home runs to go along with 34 walks on the season, resulting in a .389 on-base percentage. Finally, depending on the number of players in your league, check on the availability of Arizona Diamondbacks' Miguel Montero. He is owned in 86% of Yahoo League's However, his numbers are very similar to LaCroix's. They both have 6 home runs and 27 RBIs, but Montero's batting average is 20 points lower, although his on-base percentage is 30 points higher. Both are on potential playoff teams, depending on how long the Diamondbacks can keep their hot streak up, so grab either if you need help. Moving on now to first base, where one of my personal favorite fantasy bargains is eligible. He can also play the outfield, and despite being on a World Series team last year and batting 311 this year, he is only owned in 45% of Yahoo leagues. The guy is Mitch Moreland, and he is a big, power-hitting on-base machine. If he is available in your league, don't hesitate to grab him. Another first baseman who is not getting enough respect so far this season is Arizona State product Brett Wallace. He's a first-year starter for the Houston Astros, and although he may not contribute a ton of home runs and RBIs, he is maintaining a 319 batting average, good enough for six in the National League. Odds are he won't keep that up all season, but why not ride his hot start while you can? My final dark horse first base pickup for Week 1 is 37-year-old veteran Todd Helton. He is owned in only 37% of leagues, but he is maintaining a 301 average with 7 home runs, 24 RBIs, and 19 walks, good enough for a 370 on base percentage. Don't be turned off by Helton's age. He is still a solid power hitter, and he is in the most hitter-friendly ballpark in the major leagues in Coors Field, so give him a look if you are in a deeper league and need help. Next up is second base. As a Los Angeles native, I naturally hate the Giants, but I must give credit where it is deserved. San Francisco's second baseman, Freddy Sanchez, has been easily their best and most consistent hitter thus far. If his 296 batting average isn't good enough to capture your attention, maybe his 342 on base percentage is. He won't get you steals or too many home runs, but he will keep your team balanced both defensively and offensively with batting average and RBIs. My number two pickup is similar to Sanchez, except he has six stolen bases and an exceptional 351 on base percentage. Another plus is that he can play second base, shortstop, or third base, and is on a team that relies heavily on his consistent production. This mystery player is Los Angeles Angels' Maisar Izturez. He is only owned in 53% of leagues and is worth a look just because of his triple position eligibility but his offensive numbers and phenomenal 995 on-base percentage make him a must-own in any format league. Finally, if you are in a really deep league such as 12 or more teams, take a look at Seattle Mariners' Adam Kennedy. As a team, the Mariners hit 230, the worst in the major leagues, but Kennedy leads away with a strong 292 batting average. He has 5 steals and 18 RBIs to go along with a 329 on-base percentage. 
He is also eligible at first and third base, so for a deep league, he should probably be considered a steal. Switching gears now, let's take a look at the left side of the infield, starting with shortstop. If you are like me and own either Henley Ramirez or Troy Tulowitzki, you are probably pretty frustrated by this point and looking for a good temporary replacement. I picked up both of these first two guys, and so far I am happy with how they have been doing to take some of the pressure off of Tulowitzki. The first is Junel Escobar of the Toronto Blue Jays. He has been an exceptional leadoff hitter for them all season and has a slash line of 284, 363, 437, with Jose Bautista and a now healthy Adam Lind behind him in the lineup. He has the potential to score a ton of runs. He has also hit seven home runs thus far, which is great for a leadoff man, so I would recommend picking him up first. If he is not available, check out Eric Ibar of the LA Angels. Along with a 297 batting average, he has 14 stolen bases and a very solid glove. He generally hits second, and despite the Angels lacking structured power bats other than Mark Trumbo, he always finds a way to cross home plate as proven by his 23 runs scored thus far. Finally, a good shortstop pickup in a deeper league would be Baltimore Orioles' J.J. Hardy. Recently off the disabled list, he is swinging a hot bat good enough to raise his average up to 275 to go along with five home runs. As Hardy reiterates regularly, he prides himself on his defense, claiming that's what got him to the major leagues, and so far this season it has resulted in a perfect 1,000 fielding percentage. So take a look at him in a deep league or definitely if you are in an AL only league. Moving now to the hot corner where I will lead off with New York Mets rookie Justin Turner. Eligible at both second and third base, the Mets were just hoping he could do an okay filling job for injured third baseman David Wright and released second baseman Luis Castillo, and boy has he. Through his first 34 games, he has 24 RBIs along with a 308 batting average, three stolen bases, and a very impressive 991 fielding percentage. Still owned in only 29% of Yahoo leagues, Turner is a sleeper pickup, and I would not be surprised if his average stayed above 280 all season, so jump on it if he's available in your league. Another good third base pickup and the third infielder from his team is the Angels' Alberto Callaspo. Although a liability on defense, he has a terrific swing that has resulted in an even 300 batting average to go along with 22 walks for an incredible 367 on base percentage. Like Ibar and Isturiz, he's not much of a power hitter, but he makes up for it with 28 RBIs, good enough for third on his team, and warrants a look in AL only and 12 or more team leagues. Transitioning now to the outfield, where as a passionate Kansas City Royals enthusiast, I am legally required to say that all three of our current outfielders have proven worthy of being picked up in any league. Jeff Francoeur is a big, power-hitting defensive specialist who knows how to steal bases. Melky Cabrera and Alex Gordon are no different. If you need an outfielder who can basically do everything, take any of our guys. As for non-Royals, start by checking out Alan Craig of the St. Louis Cardinals. He is eligible at both second base and in the outfield, and is currently rocking a red-hot slash line of 340, 408, 528 with 23 RBIs in 39 games. I would be very surprised if he kept this up all season, but that really shouldn't factor into your decision on picking him up. The Cardinals are in the midst of a great divisional battle with Milwaukee right now, and the bottom line is he's producing, so go with him while he's hot, and maybe you'll be surprised at how long the fire underneath him stays lit. While we are talking about Cardinals who are on fire, how about John Jay? As a rookie last year, he hit 300 in 105 games. In 59 games so far this season, he's hitting 331 with a 392 on base percentage, 5 steals, and 14 RBIs. He already has as many home runs now, 4, in 130 at bats as he did last season in 287. For some strange unknown reason, he is only owned in 14% of leagues, yet he warrants a pickup regardless of league format. Check on the Cardinals pair and grab both of them if you already have enough power on your team. Finally, if you are in a deep or NL only league, take a look at Washington Nationals' Lance Nix. Owned in only 13% of Yahoo leagues, he has 9 home runs out of 40 total hits. He also has a 296 batting average, and of the 40 total hits, 18 have been for extra bases. 
Knicks does tend to go through periodic slumps, but so far in 2011, he's been unstoppable and is worth a look if you're a little short on outfielders. That marks the end of my suggested pickups for week one. Until I get a better feel for what type of league my audience is in, I will assume that most of you are in leagues that use pitching staffs rather than individual pitchers, therefore I will not be suggesting good pitching pickups until at earliest week two. Also, this will not be a weekly show. Because fantasy baseball requires daily attention, I will most likely be publishing only one, but maybe two, webisodes per month. But keep in mind, the shows will progressively get longer as I add more segments to them. As for what to expect in week number two, I will be opening up my fan mailbag. If you want advice on whether or not to pull the trigger on a big trade, pick up a player on a subpar team, or drop a high draft pick, who hasn't been living up to his potential all season, please send those questions to dj.wilson11 at yahoo.com, and I will answer them on my next show. Thank you very much for listening into week one, everybody. Until next time, I'm DJ, and this is Fantasy.